Hi, I'm Terry and this is Blanche by Self Converted Micro Camper. I've had a few requests for a van tour and I'm finally getting around to doing it. So let's go and have a look. So Blanche is a 2010 Ford Transit Connect. It's a long wheelbase and a high roof. The reason I chose this one is Blanche is my second conversion. So before this one, I had a Mark II VW Caddy and it was tiny, it was so small. The plus side was um, I was able to get it ridiculously cheap. It was like £690, whereas this one was, I think it was £2,800. Um, the mileage was like 70 something thousand miles on the clock, which was obviously a really good deal, I thought. Um, one thing I would say is I bought it off eBay and I bought it without viewing it. Um, I was actually travelling back up north after seeing my boy and I was bidding for it while I was driving. So I don't recommend doing that. Go and check it out first, take it for a test, test drive. I was just pretty lucky, I think, with this one. Um, so yeah, so some of the modifications that I did was to put um, rear windows in and this roof vent. The windows I bought from Van Pimps and paid for the rubber ceiling that goes around as well. Um, they were super straightforward to put in. A little bit scary cutting the hole but it worked out alright. And I've just like trimmed it with this rope that I got from Amazon. And then the roof vent I bought from Amazon. And again a little bit nerve wracking cutting the hole but it was fine. And it just opens up, lets in some air really handy for what I'm cooking and then it's got this bug screen as well. I don't have a huge amount of footage from the conversion because I decided quite um, quickly that I was going to quit my job and go travelling for three months so I had to like really rush through the, um, the van build uh, but if I do have any footage I'll try to slice it in. So heating. I don't have a heater in the van it's quite small so I seem to get away with it um, quite well. I do have insulation though. I've got 25 mil insulation boards on all of the like um, all of like the recesses, and then in all of the cavities, I put in some natural insulation as well. And then I've also used some spray foam for any of the gaps, and it's insulated on the walls, the roof, and the floor. And it does keep it warm enough. It's obviously not fantastically well insulated in terms of like I was in Scotland in February and it was minus four degrees and the windows and everything froze and I didn't have a heater but what I did do was just continuously top up hot water bottles. I had long johns on, a big Udi, lots and lots of blankets and it wasn't exactly comfortable but it was okay. It was definitely livable. Like I lived there for, for a month and it was fine. Um, but yeah so that's the that's the heating side of it so next <laughs> yeah so so one of the things that the insulation is also really good for is keeping it cool as well um without it it would just get super super hot in the summer because it would just mean that metal would heat up a lot um, and that helps disperse the heat so it's very important for the summer as well as the winter so storage wise I have this little shelf which is above the bench area um, it's a perfect space to put these jars with like coffee and porridge I have my coffee pot which is probably my most used thing in the van um, and then like this little pot where I keep random things like there's toothpaste in there a spare hearing aid I put my toothbrush and stuff when I'm traveling um, I've got like my little art stuff on the wall and then we have cupboard at the end. This one has my water in. Very simple plumbing, which goes down to this. I deliberately chose to have a smaller waist than fresh water, just because I want to make sure I'm emptying it regularly. Fire blanket and washed up liquid. I use, I change the cap for where the tap is to a solid one when the tank is full when I'm driving um, once it's been used a little bit it's not too bad just having it with the hole in um, so yeah so this is my water system um, I have a 20 litre fresh water tank and a 5 litre grey waste 
and you can see it's just plumbed in underneath the sink here. This is actually for washing machines, um, but it fit really well and I just cut a hole in the top of there. But this part, you can see it's just like, I don't know if you can see actually. You can see it's, I just drilled a hole in the top of it and then bought this silicon pipe which attached to the tap. Um, and my tap is an electronic one. It's just got the butt to start. It's a really simple tap. It's actually the ones that would go on the big water bottles. Um, but it works perfectly for this. I've set it in with just using a hole saw. But I've made it so it can be removed because it's got a charging point at the back and it just makes it easier to remove it to charge. Um, but yeah, in terms of like water consumption, that 20 litres would normally last me about a week. So moving along, got another cupboard. It's got two shelves. Keep a basket with like food stuff in. A little pan. I just, I end up using this pan more than any other. I used to have a couple of others, but this is just so easy for one person. Um, and then I've got a small gas bottle. Um, one of these little stores which just opens up uh, that way around it's got little, like little legs that come out and then that part just screws onto the top um, I tend to use this one more than my other hob just because it's, it's really easy it means that like when I'm making a cup of coffee in the morning it's just very very quick and I think when you're making coffee in the morning it needs to be quick but yeah, I can like add another um, basket when I'm away for a bit longer and I want to store a bit more food. Uh, I just have to open that drawer first. Next cupboard again, it's just two shelves. Uh, this is more food. And at the moment, it's just got my pan in it, which is really useful, like toast bread, um, to make pizzas and things. And then a drawer just with random bits and pieces. This drawer was just made using a drawer from an old bedside cabinet. Um, and yeah, it could do with being sorted out, to be honest, it's a bit messy. This is super handy, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, then lastly, I've got the electrics at the top. And then I've got just random bits and pieces in here, like spare kettle, a hookup if I'm going to an actual campsite. Um, spare gas, a first aid kit, duct tape, which is essential. And then my sister gave me this as well, which is a heater that you can plug in to a cigarette lighter, which I haven't actually used yet, but it seems like it would be all right. It's quite quiet. Um, so you've got either fan or heat. I don't know if that's going to show up. There you go. So I set it to fan, and then it should cool me down it's just a bit like a hairdryer I guess but yeah I also have one of these stoves as well this is if I want to maybe if I was cooking something a bit bigger or if I had other people in the van I would want to be making bigger meals so I would use that one um, but to be honest I very very rarely use it um, and then I've got my electric panel here so this is where all my lights are run from I've got the fairy lights and if we go for this one I have touch lights Again, I use the fairy lights more than anything else in here. It's very rare I use the um, touch lights. So this is my little inverter. It's actually ideal for the van. It's got a place for a three-point plug. And then you've got the two USB charging ports. Um, within the switch panel, there's also two um, USB ports, but there's this cigarette charger in this part. Um, and then you would just be able to plug things into it 
um, this is what I would use to charge my camera batteries but it's also handy for like charging laptops and stuff um, just anything with a three point plug to be honest um, it's it's really handy for I also have this cool box um, which I got from Halfords at the minute it's just got the milk and mushrooms in because I've just been to Lidl to get some groceries for home and again this just connects via a USB uh, not a USB a cigarette lighter charger so I can plug it directly into the leisure battery via this socket but it is quite a draw on the electric so quite often I will feed it through to the front and run it from the cigarette lighter in the cab when I'm driving so on the roof of the van I want to give it something quite interesting so I scored some lines so it looks a little bit like panelling um, and then along the edges I've got this fake ivy and the fairy lights um, my lovely flags at the back and then I used a length of tongue and groove just to tidy up the edging. Um, I also have this bookshelf which is above my bed and this was just made using pallet wood and a long branch which I cut down to size and screwed in so it's really sturdy and I can just store like lots of books here which is handy. So the electrics are stored underneath this fridge so if I move this out of the way With the spare blankets. You'll be able to see this section at the back pops up, and I got this battery from Euro Parts. Um, it's all wired up for my solar. Um, yeah. So I'll go into more detail about the electrics when I get back home so I can show you the diagram of how I set it all up but um, it was quite straightforward. I've got a split charge that runs off the engine when I'm driving and I also have a solar panel which I fitted onto the roof. Um, it was a really straightforward process, kind of. <laughs> um, a few little like teething problems but um but yeah it was, it was relatively straightforward um i think that i'm gonna have to invest in another battery because the fridge does draw a lot more power than i was expecting it to so i tend not to use it all the time i don't constantly have it plugged in um and also it is just a cool box it's not an actual fridge But yeah, I'm pretty sure that I've got some footage of the electrics um, and if not, I'll just do a diagram. Right, should we see how the bed works? Right, so the bed, it's a very straightforward design. I've done like an L shape, as you've seen where the electrics are. Um, under the other cushion is where I keep the duvet. So it's just like another compartment and that's where my duvet is stored. So you can see how it all looks when it's made up. And let me just stick it in the driver's seat when I'm setting up the bed. And I shall leave the bag to show you. So that's the bed set up. It's probably somewhere between <laughs> it's probably somewhere between a single and a three-quarter width. So it's perfect for one person. A little bit of a squeeze if you've got somebody else in here. Um, you definitely have to know them pretty well. <laughs> but I'll show you how that looks. So you can see there's plenty of space. I'll take the exact measurements when I get back home so you can see because I don't have a tape measure with me um, but for just I normally obviously put a sheet down you can see it's just made with lats I also used a length of 
cladding just to keep them all together without it being too raised so you don't feel that underneath the mattress. Speaking of, the mattress is just, it's like a thick foam mattress which I got from Ikea and cut down to size and then covered it with this green velvet. Um, the velvet I actually got from Freecycle, it was like curtains from a big Victorian townhouse. Um, but it works out well. So this is just the, the compartment for the duvet. Just goes in here. Is that just sitting on it? Perfect size. And that because it just goes back on top. So under the bed as well, I have these big drawers. Uh, one big drawer and one smaller one. Um, and that's just where I keep these packing cubes with clothes and things. These are just the stuff I haven't taken in the house yet. These are really handy as well. I have not. Lucy and Yakdongarees, and they come in these little bags, but they're ideal for like wash bags and stuff. Um, the fire extinguisher I normally keep in here. I normally keep in the drawer at the top, especially after watching chapter by chapter's video when the fan caught fire. I'm like super aware that I need to have it handy. Um, and then, as you can see, there's also another drawer. And this is just generally like bits and pieces like I've got my fly nets in. I normally keep like art supplies and stuff in here. Uh, dirty sock. Um, but yeah, like electrical stuff. So I've got my laptop and stuff with us. Charging cables and stuff. Um, oh, I didn't show you the sink either. So the sink is just a bamboo bowl that I bought from Aldi. And I sealed it with um, resin. And then just drilled a hole for the sink attachment and then sealed around the edges, which needs to be resealed actually. Um, but yeah, so in terms of material, the doors are made with just tongue and groove cladding and then I've used these little locks to stop them flying open. This gorgeous live edge was actually just on the pallets. It was on one of the pallets, so I cut it down to make a nice trim. All of the top, like all of this Aztec top was made using pallets and I just painted some of them white and in some of them grey. Yeah, the, um, the bed I made with a mix of things actually. I had some um, some 2x2 two two battens which I made the basic frame with and I also like upcycled an old futon that I had that I'd bought from Ikea, like a wooden futon. So I used the lats from that but then I had like um, I went to the clearance department of Ikea because I was working there at the time and they had uh, one of the beds, I think it was the needle bed but it has like the long laths as well so I was able to use that to build the outside and I think I got that for like about a tenner or something. The foot on I had bought second hand for 20 quid um, and in the first van build I actually used the mattress from the foot on so it was like so cost effective to do that so I would definitely recommend looking on places like Gumtree and ideally Freecycle as well like the velvet was from Freecycle. Um, yeah I, know, I think I'd already said like the mattress was from Ikea but again it was from the clearance corner I think I got that for about £35 I think it was. Um, so it's worth looking out for places like that. Um, wow. Um, but yeah, like I stained the roof with um, oil paints because I already had it. So I just used like burnt umber with a little bit of turps. Um, yeah, and that's it, I think, pretty much. Um, I'll show you the front where I drive, but there's not really a lot more to say about this one. I shall. Let's see, yeah, so when I get back home, I shall do a diagram of the electrics and I'll also take some measurements so you can see. Um, the drawers are on runners that I got from Screwfix and I think they were like 450 for a pack of two. 
it's like really good value and they're really strong as well um they're not like the heavy duty ones that you would use to pull out a full like table kind of one but they're certainly good enough for the drawers um and yeah i think that's i think that's everything back here um yeah like the cladding on the door on the sliding door that was a little bit trickier i did originally um can we see from there actually i did originally cut out all this part so it went around the door but then i realized it just looked a bit messy where you could see the rubber trim so i ended up putting this like redoing this part and how it was an overlap and then it just makes it a little bit neater to go all the way across um and then I have my macrame up partly because it looks pretty but also if the side doors open it acts as like a book screen as well stops things flying in um, yeah so yeah I think that's probably about it for back here um, it's just it's a small van there's not going to be a lot to see really um, yeah, I'll take it to the front and we can see uh, and just to note as well, as you've probably seen, I've changed locations and this looks so pretty. I've just got this field of flowers behind. So it looks like some kind of idyllic location. But if I take a look outside, I'm actually in the Aldi car park, a uh, little car park. <laughs> so yeah, don't be fooled by social media folks because not always as pretty as it seems. <laughs> so, into the front, just normal driver's seat. Um, my little nodding Bob Ross even talks. Yeah, so it's just a standard configuration here. Um, this is a mattress topper that I usually use just to give us some extra comfort. Um, and it normally just lives in the front and then in the footwell is where I normally keep the paddle board. Um, I also have a map and a map just in case I run out of signal. In the, drive, in the passenger door I have screwdrivers and a little socket wrench, just little bits of DIY stuff. And then the thing that I love about the Ford Connect is the front seat opens up so I've got things like, um, like my AA kit there I've got like the wrench um, the jack um, WD-40 spare oil spare coolant and then here we have excuse that here we have the battery monitor kill switch and the relay for the electrics that just runs this runs all the way along underneath the door and then I found like a little hole through here so that's attached to the engine by uh, just a um, little bolt on the, on the engine on the positive. So the electrics have proven to be a little bit more tricky to explain than I thought so I'll do a separate post on those but for now I think that concludes the van tour. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions about anything, just drop them in the comments and I shall do my best to answer them. Remember to like, comment and subscribe um, and have a lovely, lovely day. Thank you. Bye.